What does it mean to be a black man in America? It means you're a target for marketing, you're a target for police brutality, um, you're a target for the bottom of the totem pole in this uh, capitalist society. Um, you are a torch carrier of so much burdens, so many burdens. And, and you have to teach your children, your offspring, ma mainly your son, what to do, what not to do, like you are constantly at war being African. Fatherhood ain't a title you can just drop on somebody. They got to earn it. Well, it means that, to me, growing up in America is, is, is pretty fucked up at some times for a lot of youth, including myself when I was in that mind frame. Um, you know, poor educational system, police brutality, black on black crime, um, being raised in a, in, a, in, a, in a household that's not conducive to a positive turnout, it's pretty rough, man. That's trouble. Being a black man in these United States has always been a risky enterprise. You're constantly at war. Um, for, the, for the most part, man, it's a very scary existence. Because no matter what situation that you put yourself in, you always got to work twice as hard as everybody around you. You got to be willing to accept half the pay as everybody around you, and that's not fair. You get what I'm saying? This country has never been fair to a black man or to an African man. It has never been, and I doubt it ever will. You know, racism is, is alive and breathing. It's alive and kicking, but they found clever ways to implement it. My neighborhood was pretty diverse. It was I would say mainly Caribbean based, a lot of Trinidadians, Jamaicans, Haitians, a um, few Americans scattered around. Um, you, had to, you had to be tough, you had, you had to be tough. Um, most of the time you was dealing with people who had a, level, a lot of brothers and sisters in their household, so I learned the importance of having a weapon at, a, at an early age. So when did you realize as a young black child you were being treated differently? Oh, I was eight years old. Black and white TV. I saw civil rights unfolding in that little screen we had. It, it, I remember trying to back out of a room the first time I realized that the dogs were actually snipping at them people and they were down there singing and marching. And my mind was like, oh, heck no, I'm afraid of dogs. And they would sick a dog on me. And then I realized also the white boys in my class that were whispering nigger behind me. But at age 10, I remember the inaugural address of John Fitzgerald Kennedy because he asked me what I could do for my country. And it was a profound question for a 10-year-old. Um, all right, my name is uh, Stefan. Uh, I, I go by Ill Flow, I go by Ill Flicks. Um, I grew up downtown Brooklyn, Gowanus Projects, um, Coney Island. I, you know, I grew up in Coney Island, I grew up in Gowanus, going back and forth. Most, um, I had to learn quick uh, who was a friend, who wasn't a friend. Uh, the majority of the time, I, I was bouncing back and forth between households. So I didn't, have, I didn't have what one would consider a normal time to make friends. Unfortunately not. I grew up with my mother, um, Gwendolyn Edwards. She was a, a, very, a very intellectual uh, individual. She was um, a member of the National Council of Negro Women. She worked for the um, Center for Disease Control, um, the Poison Control Center, like she <laughs> like, like to call it. Um, and she read a lot. She read a, a whole lot. She read a lot. She listened to different types of music. My pops is a very funny individual. He is from Haiti. Um, he's a pastor now. He, um, he's a mover. He's a mover. You know, um, he has a couple of different families. And, you know, not necessarily children. He has families. He has a family in Brooklyn, which is me and my brother. Then he has a second family 
uh, in Brooklyn. He has another family in Queens. Then he has a family in Florida, and he has a family in Haiti. All right. Um, when I was young, my mother got sick, um, and she had to go away. So me, I was at the time. I think my brother was just born, or maybe one. And I was in, they put me in foster care. I had to go to foster care before my aunt and them could, you know, take custody. I mean, they had to put me through foster care or whatever. So I did that for a while. I was in, um, uh, I don't know if it's a group home or I don't, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it's called. Now I can look back and it wasn't a group home. It was one house. Someone took custody of me. And it was real, a lot of that, I, learned, I know now that I had blocked a lot of that shit out because um, it was crazy. It was crazy. I was like a human remote control. Um, I think I was around six or five or seven or something like that, and I had I I peed the bed. So what she did was was a white lady. She took me in the backyard and hosed me off, and and made me sleep on the floor with no clothes on. You know, and that shit fuck with me. You know, for lack of a better expression, no other way to uh, to uh, label it. It fuck with me for a while, and. It just, it just made me standoffish, and, and I stopped trusting people. I started realizing people will do fucked up shit to you if you put yourself in a situation that would allow them to do so. They will, you know, just do it because they could. Um, so ne inevitably, I got out of there, and my aunt from Coney Island uh, took custody of me. My aunt Sadie, God bless her dad. Well, growing up with a, with a mother and a father in the same household was like, it was dope. I don't, I don't know how it would turn out. If I didn't have my mother and my father in the same household, um, they raised me with morals and principles. My father was always hard on me. He was one who was keen to be on top of me about responsibilities and the importance of always being on my A game. He conveyed that in a way of screaming all the time. Everything was screaming, 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 ah, 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 like a drill sergeant. So I, I, when I look back at it now, he prepared me for prison in, in the white man's world. What led to my incarceration? It had to be greed in the pursuit of financial happiness. In, in prison, I would, I would have to say, statistically back, that at least 80% of my inmates' peers were fatherless childs or came through the group home setting. Um, these men, however, were fantastic if you really got into the inner core to learn about who they were as people, as persons. I didn't. I didn't learn about manhood. What happened was, I, you learned the hard way. <clears throat> you go through life figuring, oh, I shouldn't have did that. Oh, shouldn't have did that, you know. And it cost me a lot, you know, it cost me a lot. A lot of things that I didn't know. Um, you know, look a man in the eyes, firm handshake, you know, no reason to lie. I, I, didn't, I didn't learn all of those things until after I should have already known them. You know, you know, my mother did the best she could, you know, but she's a woman. And she, she might know what she wants in a man, but she, I don't necessarily think a woman knows how to be a man or teach a man to be a man. You know, so I don't put that burden on her. Um, again, she tried, or she tried the best way she could, you know, and she did a, she did a hell of a job um, with me and my brother. Um, he knows what he's supposed to know, but if I don't know it, I can't teach it to him. You know what I mean? So a lot, of the, a lot of times it was just figuring shit out the hard way and know not to do the same thing. The young black man of America, um, pull up your pants and tie your boots up real tight, man, because it's a war that's been declared on us. And <laughs> it ain't no war where you just grab a gun and shoot. It's a war where you got to think, you got to strategize. In order for you to do that, sometimes you got to put down the weed and put down the syrup. The life of a black man will not get any easier in the soil and the times that you're living upon. That's why a lot of us self-destruct and want to commit suicide. Mm.